Welcome to this tutorial on model-based design for quadcopter autopilot. From concept to prototype. Here is the outline of this tutorial. In this session, we will focus on modeling the environment and conducting 3D simulations in Simulink. Here is the top model. In this session, we will explore the environment block. First, we will walk through the process of modeling environments, followed by a demonstration of how to conduct 3D simulations in Simulink. We'll begin by developing a wind model that captures gusts, wind shear, and turbulence characteristics. The wind gust model block simulates gusts based on configurable parameters such as amplitude, direction, and start time. The wind shear model block adds wind shear effects to the wind profile. It models variations in wind speed and direction with altitude. The wind turbulence model block introduces stochastic turbulence using the Dryden spectral model. It generates turbulence by filtering band-limited white noise through shaping filters. Next, let's move on to modeling the atmosphere. This involves simulating key atmospheric properties, such as air temperature, sound speed, pressure, and density. These parameters are essential for capturing the environmental conditions that affect aerodynamic forces and vehicle performance. Note that for low speed and low altitude drone applications, these properties can often be simplified by using constant values. The atmospheric temperature model exhibits distinct variations with altitude and serves as the foundation for standard atmospheric simulations. In Simulink, the ISA atmosphere block generates the corresponding temperature versus altitude profile. The speed of sound generally decreases with altitude in the lower atmosphere due to decreasing temperature. In Simulink, the ISA atmosphere block can be used to generate the corresponding speed of sound versus altitude profile based on the International Standard Atmosphere model. Air pressure decreases with altitude because the density of air molecules drops as you go higher. At sea level, the air column above is the greatest, so pressure is highest. As altitude increases, there's less air above you, resulting in lower pressure. The ISA atmosphere block in Simulink provides standard pressure values as a function of altitude, based on the International Standard Atmosphere model. Air density decreases with altitude because both air pressure and temperature decrease as you go higher in the atmosphere. Since density depends on both, the reduction is quite significant with altitude. You can use the ISA atmosphere block in Simulink to get air density as a function of altitude, based on the International Standard Atmosphere model. This is particularly useful for modeling aerodynamic forces or simulating high-altitude flight. In our previous lesson on modeling flight dynamics, we didn't explore the aerodynamics block in detail. In this session, now that we've incorporated wind and atmospheric models, we'll take a closer look at it. The aerodynamics of a quadcopter involve coefficients such as lift, drag, and the aerodynamic moments for roll, pitch, and yaw. They also include dynamic derivatives like roll rate, pitch rate, and yaw rate, which influence the vehicle's stability and response. In Simulink, aerodynamic behavior is typically modeled using lookup tables, which map aerodynamic coefficients to variables such as airspeed and body rates. Overall, in Simulink, we use multiple lookup tables to simulate total lift and drag forces and moments, incorporating the effects of airspeed, wind disturbances, and gusts. These forces and moments are then transformed to a specific reference point, typically the center of the quadcopter body, and applied to the model using the external force and torque block. All right, next we'll move on to modeling gravity in the simulation. NASA's gravity field model is based on precise satellite measurements and global models. These models account for variations in Earth's gravitational field due to its shape and the presence of mountains, valleys, and other large-scale geological features. They represent Earth's gravity field as a series of spherical harmonics, 
which help calculate the gravitational potential and acceleration at any given location on or above the Earth's surface. In Simulink, gravity can be modeled either as a constant or by using the gravity block, which accounts for latitude, longitude, and altitude. The figure illustrates the gravity variation between Bangkok and Stockholm, highlighting the significant difference in gravity due to their contrasting latitudes. Next, we'll transition to working with 3D simulations. In this session, we will focus on conducting 3D simulations in Simulink, integrated with Unreal Engine. First, we will introduce the Simulation 3D Scene Configuration block to create and configure 3D scenes. For the scene source, we can select Default Scenes, which provide a selection of pre-built scenes to choose from. Here you can see how the pre-built scenes appear, including options like the empty scene, airport, city block, and construction site. We can also import custom scenes by specifying the path of the source file in the Simulation 3D Actor block. The source files can either be filmbox.fbx or usd.usd files. How can we create the source files? One option is to use RoadRunner, a MathWorks product designed for creating 3D scenes and road networks. Alternatively, you can use third-party tools like Blender or obtain assets from online marketplaces that provide Filmbox or USD files. In this example, we demonstrate how to create a simple yet realistic 3D scene in Roadrunner, a powerful tool for designing 3D simulation environments. The scene includes basic elements such as a surface and fences, as well as a variety of objects commonly found in real-world settings, like cars, road signs, trees, and rocks. These components help build a visually rich and contextually accurate simulation environment which is essential for testing and validating autonomous systems. To explore the full capabilities of Roadrunner and learn how to design more complex and dynamic scenes, I highly recommend watching the one-hour Roadrunner tutorial from MathWorks. You'll find the link to the tutorial in the description of this YouTube video. Once the scene is complete, we can export it from Roadrunner in various file formats. In this case, we'll choose the USD format. This shows what the 3D simulation in Simulink looks like when integrated with Unreal Engine for visualization. The simulation provides an immersive, real-time view of the environment and vehicles, making it easier to validate system behavior in a virtual world. During the simulation, you can navigate through the scene using mouse and keyboard controls, allowing you to adjust the camera angle, zoom in and out, or follow specific objects. Now that we have a scene set up, we'll move on to adding a quadcopter into the simulation. First, we can use the Simulation 3D UAV Vehicle Block, which provides pre-built 3D models of quadcopters for visualization within the scene. This shows how the pre-built 3D UAV model appears in Simulink during simulation, visualized using the Unreal Engine environment. It provides a clear, realistic view of the quadcopter's movement and orientation within the scene. Similar to customizing the scene, we can use the Simulation 3D Actor block to customize the appearance and behavior of the quadcopter. We input the vehicle states and the propeller's rotation into the block to control the quadcopter's visualization. To customize the quadcopter, we use MATLAB scripts within the block, which allow us to add components step by step.
We begin by adding the body of the quadcopter, followed by the arms and landing gear. Finally, we import the CAD models of the propellers to complete the setup. This scene demonstrates how the 3D simulation appears in Simulink during execution. The Ego quadcopter follows a predefined trajectory, and its motion is visualized in a rich 3D environment that reflects real-time position, orientation, and movement dynamics. The visualization is powered by Unreal Engine, which runs under the hood to deliver high-quality graphics, realistic lighting, and environmental effects. This allows users to gain deeper insights into system behavior and performance in a visually immersive setting, crucial for validating autonomous flight algorithms and environmental interactions. During simulation, we can override various scene settings, such as the weather and sun position, including parameters like sun azimuth, sun altitude, clouds, fog, rain, and snow, as demonstrated in this video. Now, returning to the Simulation 3D Scene Configuration block, we can specify the scene source as Unreal Editor if the scenes have already been created in an existing Unreal Engine project. This example demonstrates how Simulink and the Unreal Engine Editor work together in a co-simulation setup, enabling real-time visualization and interaction with a 3D environment directly from within your simulation workflow. In this setup, Several virtual sensors, such as cameras and LiDAR, are also included to simulate how a real quadcopter would perceive its environment. These virtual sensors generate realistic data streams that can be used for testing perception and control algorithms. We'll explore how to configure and use these sensors in more detail in the next lesson. Additionally, if your scenes are created in Unity, we can co-simulate Simulink in Unity using ROS, robot operating system. This example demonstrates how the integration works. To learn more about ROS in MATLAB and Simulink, I recommend checking out my ROS2 tutorial on my channel. All right, let's wrap up this session. We've covered modeling the environment, including wind, atmosphere, and gravity, as well as conducting 3D simulations. I hope this session has provided you with a clear understanding of how these models contribute to a quadcopter simulation. In the next session, we will focus on modeling the virtual sensors. I look forward to your participation.